Okay, let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 16 through 18. It should be a familiar verse to many of you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. The title of the message is, Are You Truly Separated? Are You Truly Separated? The Bible says, And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Amen. Are you truly separated? Separation is something that can be really hard. When you're little, you're trying to find those quarters, right? You know, you're walking about and you see the shiny coins. And then, you know, you're little and everything is worth a lot to you. You see, you know, these brownish things, you know, penny. You're like, okay, that was worth something. But when you see something shiny, you know, like, you know, dime or even quarters, right, shiny, and then you run to go grab it. And maybe sometimes you see it under a car, and then you go in there, and you try to grab it. But unbeknownst to you, there was a gum somewhere. And then as you try to grab that quarter, and then you try your best, right? And you, you're little, you know, you have a, you know, smaller arm, arms than adults, and then you crawl in there, and then you finally grab that quarter. Man, I have it, you know. But suddenly, you touch your hair. Like, oh, it feels a little sticky. You know, it feels a little sticky. What do you know, there was a gum underneath. And then now you're stuck, and then your hair is full of gum. Right? And then can you imagine? And then you try to take it off. It hurts so much. And then you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. And you don't look like, you know, you anymore. You know, half of your hair is like this way. You know, and then you come. And you try to separate it. You know, with just water, it doesn't work. It becomes really hard. And then people, you know, there are ways to do it, right? They say, use your peanut butter. You know, pour down that tasty peanut butter on your hair, and then, you know, you could separate those gums. I don't know if it has ever happened to you, right? But it, it does happen here and there. And it becomes really hard to separate. And as Christians, there are things in your life where, or parts of your life, you have to be separated, but you're just stuck, just like that gum on your hair. You're, you're just constantly you know, every time you feel like, oh yeah, I know what that would do to me. But you see that shiny coin, and then you fall back into it. And getting to there is really dirty, right? You know, like on the road, you know, there's 
it's not the prettiest thing or it's not the cleanest thing. Will you go out on the road or will you go out to this parking lot and then you know, put your hands on the ground and then go out there and or you, would you be proud to shake people's hand? You know, like you know, Nathan's dad, you know, Brother Benjamin, nice to meet you. I just you know, had my hand on the ground, you know. No, you wouldn't do that, right? But however, as Christians, you live a life like that. You know it's dirty, you know it's unclean, you know it's harmful to you, but you still go back. Why do you have such a hard time separating yourself from certain things? And we already know the answer. It's because you have love for your flesh, love for pleasure, and you have love for the world. And those are common things as Christians, you know, you have to go through. However, if you continuously live, you know, unseparated life, right? Being yoked together with, you know, worldly things, ungodly things, you'll never get rid of that gum in your hair. Can I ask you a question? Like for anybody, if you're going out on a you know, nice dinner with your loved ones, whether it's family dinner, anniversary dinner, you know, birthday dinner, right? Would you go out there with your gum on your hair? Right? I don't think so. Man. Unless you're crazy, you're, not, you're gonna try to be presentable. You're gonna be looking good. However, in the sight of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, many of you, and myself included, you know, a lot of days, we just have that gum stuck in our hair and we think everything's okay, you know. Sometimes, you know, as a kid, you think you could hide a lot of things. But parents know, and our parents here know, that kids cannot hide anything from them because they will find it. They have that motherly and fatherly, you know, intuition or in instinct, right? Like he could say, you know, I didn't play game, you know, today, all day, and I studied all day, but somehow they find it. You know, that, you know, that controller is pretty warm. You know, there's evidence of, you know, you know, this game consoles, you know, moving or simple things. Like you shouldn't eat that, right? Nah, you shouldn't eat, touch that cookie. You shouldn't be eating that, you know, sugary stuff. Sarai, yeah, you know, Sarai probably wouldn't touch it. But for the rest of the kids, like, you know, I'm so hungry, you know, I can't resist. And then they eat it, and then they feel like, oh yeah, I covered that top with the bottom. So it still looked like the same height. No, you know, they'll, they'll see and they'll know. But as Christians, that's what you try to do many times. You want to get to place as far as you can without crossing the line, when you know that you're crossing the line, when it comes to separation. Let's turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. You have to look at your current state as a Christian and check how truly separated you are. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So check if you're walking in the Spirit. If not, you will be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, very important verse. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that he cannot do the things that he would. In the book of Matthew, the you know, Lord said that you cannot you know, serve two masters. You have your flesh, you have your spirit. And it's a very good verse to use. People have a lot of struggles, for example, with music, worldly music. It's something that people have a hard time separating themselves from. And especially you grew up before you got saved, you're listening to a lot of worldly music. It's one of those things that's really, really hard to get rid of. And you hear it everywhere. Gas station, you know, we go to market, 
you go to department store, you know, everywhere, you know, restaurant, what do they do? They play music, worldly music. However, the Bible says, you know, spirit against flesh. Flesh and spirit cannot be together. They're against each other. Then when you look at your life, you know, just a common example, when it comes to music, right? What kind of music do you listen to? Separation means separation from certain things and separation to certain things. So literally, you know, you're separate from that thing and you're separate unto this thing. And usually it means you're separate from sin, world, flesh, the devil, to God. That's what separation is. I mean, in scripture, it literally means that Christian is to withdraw himself from, you know, evil forces, influences, evil company. And it's not to live a life that is in line with the world. If your philosophy, if your thinking, and if your mindset is aligned with the world, then you're not separated. You're separated actually from God unto the world, which is opposite. However, so many Christians are conformed, aligned to this world instead of being conformed to God. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Even some of you, today, yesterday, past week, I'm sure you were aligned with many of the things of the world. And you really have to look at yourself. At the end of the day, it's your heart problem. It's whether your heart wants to be conformed to things of God or things of the world. And Romans chapter 2, verse 1, Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you ever ask yourself before you do anything or you just do it because you're, you're such a sinful person? For example, you're, you, you like a certain TV show, whatever it may be, right? It could be comedy, it could be drama, it could be action, you know. And right after you come back from church, right, Sunday service, First thing you do is turn on that TV and go to the show that you so love to see. You don't even think twice about it. You don't even think twice about, you know, is that godly, you know? Is that conforming to God or is it conforming to the world? I mean, is that worldly, right? But many of you don't even think about that. That's like secondary. You turn on your TV, and then you go, okay, oh, that was fun. You get a good laugh out of it. You get a good fun out of it. And you're done with it. But it's a repeated process. What does that tell you? You're, there's something wrong with your spiritual state. If you don't get convicted, if you don't get any conviction when you are watching something that's playing all this worldly music, that's showing all these worldly pleasures of sin, then... Either you're not saved or you backslidden so much, your heart is like seared with a hot iron that you don't even feel it anymore. Which one are you? Are you a saved Christian who needs to get right? Or are you an unsaved person who actually needs to get saved? For many of you guys sitting here right now, you're based on your testimony, you say you're saved. But however, you're living in sin. You're stuck to that gum on your hair, and you can never get out of it. But nothing's happening in your life. Then maybe you might have to really check your salvation. I never said that you're not saved. You and God only knows. However, maybe you should check, right? Especially young people who grew up inside the church who might have just repeated a prayer after someone, 
you know, you have to check. I mean, did you really know that you are a sinner on your way to hell? Right? Did you believe that Jesus died for all your sins, shedding his precious blood? Did you believe that he is God? Were you sorry that you are a sinner? Just born as a sorry sinner. You wanted God to save you and you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you can remember a certain time in your life doing that, then you might have to talk to someone right now. You might have to actually go to the Word of God. You might actually have to listen to the gospel again. And you might have to actually get saved for real this time. But as a saved Christian, you know, Bible says in 1 John 2.15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Where is your heart at today? Because in this stage, I mean, this day of, you know, digital acceleration and technology advances, people can access a lot of things at, the, at their own fingertips, especially through your own cell phone. And let me tell you, with your cell phone, you can get to almost everywhere in the world digitally, whether it's good or bad. Do you ever ask yourself this question? What I am getting ready to do is that for God's glory. You should ask that question on a regular basis. I'm about to turn on that music. Is that for God's glory? Right. I'm about to go to this station because many of us spend a lot of time in our cars. And there are a lot of TV, not TV, radio stations. And I asked this question before to, you know, during like our Wednesday service. If we were to have an open examination of your car and press every single station on your car, would you be that person who's separated from sin in the world? Or would you be a person that's actually stuck to the world? Would you be that person who can't let go of the world? Would you be that person who's listening to so many of this worldly music station? Not only that, in the past, you know, when I was growing up, we had CDs, right? We actually, cars actually had a CD, even before that, cassette players. You know, it wasn't like iPod or listening to music through app. It was actually through a regular tape. And you could see what this person listens to by looking at their collection of, you know, cassette tapes or CDs. Nowadays, it's all through, you know, transmission through, you know, app and connection to cars. Can we do that? I mean, are you, I mean, you know, can you raise your hand? Like, okay, I want everyone to just check my thing. Okay, I want everybody to, you know, press my, you know, stations. Or are you the type like, oh, can you give me a, like 30 minutes? You know, you know afterwards you could check it. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, let's, let's just wait, right? Because people have different Achilles heel. But music is one of those things that's, biggest, because music makes people emotional. Music makes people feel better. Music makes people lustful. Why do you think people listen to certain music? Because they want their flesh to feel good. It's not spiritual, and it's not godly. So when you ask that question, what am I getting uh, ready to do? Is it for God's glory. I mean, do you ever ask that question for some of you? Before you step your foot inside some wicked place, do you ever ask, you know, is it for God's glory? You know? You're like, oh, as a Christian, as a Bible believing Christian, you know, nobody goes to, you know, wicked places. Wrong. You know, just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're not gonna sin. Every saved Christian can do everything that unsaved Christian can do. Everything. You know, everything that you see in the Word of God. That's how wicked you are. 
That's why if you don't recognize that you are a wicked, sorry sinner, you'll never be separated from anything. You'll be attached to literally everything. You'll be like that kid, you know, going car to car, everywhere. You know, you want that coin no matter what. You want that pleasure. So it doesn't matter if it's dirt. It doesn't matter if it's gum. It doesn't matter if it's trash. It doesn't matter whatever it is. You're going to go through that dirty road, and you're going to go through that dirty ground, and you're going to try to experience that pleasure for a little bit. But afterwards, what happens? You have to deal with all, everything that came with it. There's always baggage to sin. There's always baggage when you're not separated. Don't think that you're okay. I did something that I wasn't supposed to do as a Christian. But no one saw it. But I don't think there's any punishment coming yet. But you know, I just said sorry to God, simply. A lot of times you don't do true repentance. And I'm okay. And then you do that cycle over and over and over. But be not deceived. God is not mocked. What serve a man so it thou shall he also reap. God is counting. Did you guys know? Every time when you're not separated, God is counting. But he's got a mercy and grace. So he gives us so many chances. So many chances, chance after chance, chance after chance. Child, don't go there anymore. Child, don't listen to it anymore. Child, don't look at it anymore. Child, don't speak like that anymore. Child, just stop. However, you don't think about if this is for God's glory. What I'm getting ready to do, I do it because I want to. That's your attitude. It's not ever about doing it for God's glory. However, you shouldn't stop there. You know, there are a lot of folks out there who say, I do it for God's glory and kill Christians left and right. Then what else should you ask yourself? You know, can I ask God's blessing upon it? I mean, truly, when you're about to light a cigarette, are you going to be like, God, please bless me? Right? Truly, when you're about to look at this wicked thing on your internet, God, please bless my eyes as I look at wicked things. I mean, are you going to ask God when you're going to a concert, rock concert, you know, so-called contemporary Christian music concert, or you know, going to a bar? You know, don't say Christians don't go to a bar. Yes, Christians go to a bar and drink and get drunk. There are a lot of alcoholics out there as well. Are you going to say, God, please bless it. If you were to look at your life, think about it. Do you ever, before you do anything, go to a set of questions? Right? You know, if you ever work somewhere, especially you know, if you work in a warehouse, if you work out in the field, you know, safety is number one. And they say, before you do anything, let's have a 10-second rule. Think about what you're about to do. I mean, is that safe? And in that 10 seconds, you know, you, may, you could think through a lot of things. When you're about to do something in your life, do you ever consider God? Do you ever consider, will it bring glory to God? Did you ever consider that, can God bless it? A lot of, you know, I mean, one of the people that God wants you to separate yourself are from fornicators the word of God. You know, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. And you may be that person too, so who knows, right? You know, either we separate from you or you separate from them. Why? Because whatever you or that person is doing, is that something God can bless, right? I mean, if you're going to fornicate before marriage, is that something, can you say, God bless it? There are a lot of carnal Christians out there. A lot of fleshly issues out there. I mean, Church of Corinthians, right? 
people of Corinthians, they had major issues with carnal lust. And don't think that you don't have it. You definitely do. And maybe some of you guys are going through it right now. You're like, oh yeah, you know, but I'm, you know, but, it, but it's a Christian, Christian woman, Christian man. Does it justify anything? I mean, are you guys, are you guys married? I mean, did you do your vows anywhere? Is it official? Or is it just for plain fun? Devil will deceive you where, you know, he or she is the love of your life. It's okay, you guys fornicate, because you guys are going to live forever. But you know what? After a year or two later, you're separated, and you have that, you know, that gum, sticky gum. But this is permanent sticky gum you can never get rid of. So before you take any of those actions, think about it. Can I ask God's blessing upon it? For many, for many people, you and I, we could have avoided a lot of sin and heartaches if we stopped for a second and then asked these questions before you and I took that action. Would, would I like for Christ to find me doing it if he came back? That's the next question. That's why people who wait on the Lord on a daily basis they live pretty separated life because they don't want the Lord to see them doing something that's sinful, right? If you knew the Lord was coming today, for example, I'm sure your life will be changed. I'm sure all those bad music that you were listening to, for today, you're not going to listen to it. I'm sure all the wrong TV stations that you watched, you're not going to watch it today. Why? Because you do not want Christ to find you doing that if you were to come back right now. That's why you have to ask yourself, would I like for Christ to find me doing it if he came back? I know one thing. I mean, if you are praying, if you are reading your Bible, obviously, you know, you want Lord to see you doing that, right? Or if you're passing out tracts and witnessing or having a family Bible study. You know, as adults, as head of families, right? Mother, fathers, you know. I mean, how do you behave at home? Can your kids see you and see that you live a separated life? Because kids see you and you're like their figure of God, right? Especially fathers, right? You're head of the household. If you start, you know, crack open a cold one, bring out a, you know, smoking, you know, habits, cussing, telling your kid, change that channel. You know what? I'm on episode 10. I need to continue to watch that dirty thing. You know, let me finish it. I need to listen to that joke, you know. That makes me happy. You know? And what's happening? Since you're not separated, you're polluting your whole family. Your wife, your children, whether it's mom, you know, your husband, your children, whether it's kids sometimes, right? Nowadays, ridiculous because how society has gone down the toilet. Kids have become the head of the household. Every decision in the house is made by the kid. Mom, we go to that place tomorrow. Mom, that toy is mine. Mom, this and that and that. Because there's no discipline in the household anymore. So kids control the house. What about you, your household? Is your household something where Lord comes back and sees you doing, and then, oh yeah, that's, that's a godly household. But he says something that you don't want to show to the Lord if you were to come back today. Man, I do not want Lord to see how I'm running my family, you know, how I'm behaving you know, as the leader of the home. You have to constantly ask these questions. You know? 
if you want to improve yourself, if you want to become a better Christian, you have to constantly ask more questions each day. Afterwards, say, would I like for Christ to find me doing it if he came back? You ask yourself, is it a good example? Before you do anything, think about it. Is that a good example? I mean, it's really quiet today because I'm pretty sure you're hitting everyone. Is that a good example? You're in your own room each day. If we had a transparent glass where we could see everything that you do, everything, would it be a good example? Is it something that we could play on this projector and play your life 24-7? Or forget about 24-7. You know, that might be just too much. Let's do from 6 to 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Let's see what happens in your life. Can we play it? Would you be a good example to brothers and sisters sitting next to you today? Would you be a good example? Because Bible says, for none of us live it to himself, and no man die it to himself, in Romans 14, 7. You're not living your own. Have you ever thought about the consequences of your actions? Obviously, a lot of people don't do. That's why they commit terrible sin after sin after sin. They don't think about future. They don't think about all these questions. You know, if you and I thought about being a good example, you and I would be a lot more cleaner than right now, a lot more holier than right now, a lot less sin than right now, especially after you got saved. You know, for some, you, you kind of understand. Your father was the devil. You know, you're living in the world, you know, as an unsaved person. However, most heartbreaking part, I'm sure, for the Lord is that you got saved. But after you got saved, some of you have become worse. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a terrible thing. You actually do more worldly stuff than you didn't before. And that's something that you have to check your heart. It's everyone's heart problem. You know, don't look at anybody else. Just look at your own heart. It's your heart attitude towards God. It's your heart problem. There's reason why some people try to avoid coming to church. Because their heart does not want to listen to God's preaching. They don't want to listen to God's word because they don't want to be convicted of sin. Are you one of, the, one of those people where you only want to listen to good things, like a pleasurable things, right? I mean, I could stand here, be like those, you know, prosperity, you know, preachers out there, you know, just teach you about Abraham's blessing. Everything's going to be all right, brother and sister. Just bring some money here, you know. Everything's going to be all right. You know, you forget about separation. You only need to give money and, you know, God will do all the separation for you, right? And then everything will be done. Everything will be all right. Prayer, forget it. You bring money here, it's okay, right? And everything's going to be good. No, it doesn't work like that. And as a Christian, if you are living a separated life, the world will not like you. That's simple as that. And for one of the questions, the last question is, is my motive for doing this to help myself? Or is my motive for doing this because God in his word told me to do it, and I know his word told me? A lot of times, you do it for your own good. A lot of times, you do it because of your motive, right? You don't think about God's word. They're like, okay, you know, I am 
going to go out there and pass out the gospel track. In itself, it's not bad. However, so many Christians become Pharisees, and you go after like tradition. You're like, you know what? I want people to look at me. I want people to see that I'm actually doing something for God. Yeah. So some of you guys come to street preaching for that reason. You know what? I want people to hear me. I want people to hear me preaching the word of God. Not because God told you to do it in his word, but because your motive is to show to other people how great you are. And you're not separated. How are you different from the Pharisees? How are you different from all these fundamentalists, right? What is your motive of doing anything in your life? For 99 of the whole population, they do it for themselves. You do it for you, right? I do it for me. I read my Bible so that I could tell people that I read a lot of Bible. I go out there and street preach so that I could tell them that I went street preaching. I go visitation because I could tell people that I led people to the Lord. You know? you, I come to church so that I could tell people I went to church. You know? I mean, this, at least, I mean, these people, like Pharisee, like, you know, proud people. The motive is wrong. You're here today not because you want to show yourself to other people. You're not, you shouldn't be listening because you want to tell people that I was listening. You do it because that's what the Bible says. You do it because God told you so. When you realize that I'm doing this because God's word told me to do it, and I know his word told me to do it, then you won't be proud. You're doing what you're just supposed to do. And along with that, everything comes into place. I'm doing this for God's glory. Because when I obey his word, I know he gets all his glory. I could ask God's blessing upon it, because he says it in his word. Would I like Christ to find me doing it? Of course, he said it. And I know it will please him, me doing what he said to do. And is that a good, good example? Of course it's a good example because I'm doing what God told me to do. Not because I want to be showy to other people. You really have to look at yourself. Even when you are dealing with your close family members, you should look at your motive. Are you doing it because, you know, you want to prove to your husband and wife that I could show you, and I could tell you, and I could prove to you one day, and I could you know, prove you wrong. Is that the reason why you do it? No, mindset is all messed up. You know? Christians, mindset is so messed up. You do it because you want to prove people wrong? Wouldn't you want to do it because God told you to do it? Wouldn't you want to do it because you want God to receive glory? But... You want to do it because you want to prove people wrong. I mean, that's a wrong mindset. I want to read the Bible at least once a year because I want to prove people wrong. You know, not because you love the Lord. Not because, because you, know, you want to get closer to the Lord. You know, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to witness. I'm going to lead a thousand people to the Lord. So that I could prove people wrong. You know, imagine if missionaries had that kind of mindset. You think God would ever bless that kind of, you know, missionary? When you want to do it because you want to prove people wrong, I mean, you're not truly separated. That's what all the worldly people think. I'm going to prove this person wrong. I'm going to prove that person wrong. You know, my motive is that so that I could prove him wrong. 